So we have the latest adaptation of the comic strip Garfield. This is one of the few movies that came out this year that I had faith in. Because there aren't that many movies anymore that I 100% fully trust can at least be decent. There were... Probably five movies where there were as little doubt in my mind that it would suck. There were ones like The Fall Guy were ones that I'm like, you know what, this could still suck. But I think the only ones that I were pretty damn confident in are this one, Ministry of, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and one yet to be released in Deadpool and Wolverine. Now we have a couple others like the Reagan biopic looks like it could be pretty good. So... Yeah, I had faith that this movie could at least be decent. My only uh, worry was that it was made by Sony. And they have made some horrendous animated movies. Do I need to bring up the Emoji Movie? Or Surf's Up 2? Or the Open Seasons franchise? Or Across the Spider-Verse? I didn't like that either. So, I don't exactly have the biggest faith in Sony... But I was hoping this movie could be good. At very least be better than the 2004 and the 2004 live action movie that I will refer to as Barfield. So, is it any good? Yeah, it's good. I'm, I bet you all expected that. I don't know if it'll make top five of the year like I was thinking it might. Like I had it kind of uh, estimated that high, but it'll definitely at least make the top ten. Because, again, this this is a kind of animated movie that I want. Yeah, it's nothing groundbreaking. There's no, like, deep message that we haven't seen before a thousand times, might I add. But it's just a fun movie that you can sit and watch for an hour and a half without getting pissed off, at least. Now, and I should mention that there's quite a rift between the critics and audience scores on this one. Where the critics is like 36% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the audience score is like hovering b between low 80s and high 70s. And I kind of understand it. I under This is one of those times where I understand why the critics didn't really like this one that much. And I understand why the audiences like this one quite a bit. So... Let's get right into this. As you saw in the title, that this movie is the definition of a cute movie. And uh, that is evident from the very first scene, where it seems like everything in that scene was tailor-made to make the audience go, aww. And that continues throughout the entire film. I mean, with baby Garfield's reactions, John's reactions, the facial expressions, how everything's shot... It's pretty much made to be a very, very cute opening. And again, that kind of continues through the rest of the film. Less with Garfield, and more with the character of Odie. Where pretty much everything he does is supposed to be funny or cute. What he does, the expressions he has, like the way his the, he gives the big eyes and the ears back kind of expressions that dogs do. It's all tailor-made to be adorable. Spe although... If they really wanted to go that route, right, I'm surprised Normal wasn't in this much. She Normal has a cameo at the very end of the movie, which I thought was kind of cool at least. But you think if they wanted to go the ultra cute route, they would have added her into the film a bit more. So, the majority of the film is Garfield teaming up with his father. And I didn't know exactly what they were going to do with this because the trailers didn't really give much about the plot. Although, unfortunately, this turns into another goddamn heist movie. I'm really sick of these. I really am sick of heist movies. I think the last one that I thought was legitimately great, like, as a heist movie, was Dungeons & Dragons. But then Wonka turned into a heist movie for some reason, and now this movie turned into a heist movie as well. Hell, even Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes kind of turned into a heist movie. I'm getting sick of the plot being some people team up to go steal something from somebody or steal something back from somebody. I'm getting really sick of these types of plots. And the weird thing is that the scenes with Garfield and his father are usually pretty well done when they're not focusing on the stupid heist that they're trying to pull. Because... 
There's two things about a Garfield movie that are part of this movie that I don't think a Garfield movie should ever have. And it's something the live action movie, at least one of these is something that the live action movie struggled with too. One, I don't think Garfield should ever be an action movie, which this movie kind of turned into in the second half. Up to this, up to that point, it was fine. It wasn't really, and I'll get more into that in a second. Actually, I'll get more into it now. Like, there's even a point where it, it's a pretty funny scene where Vic, Garfield's father, and Garfield and Odie are supposed to jump onto a train to get where they're going, and. Vic asks, have you ever jumped off a train before? And Garfield says, I've never jumped. That's pretty funny and in line with the character. But then he's doing a bunch of, like, Spider-Man level flips and jumps and everything at the end of the movie with all the drones and everything. And it's like, where did this come from? I thought he wasn't supposed to be athletic. They make a bunch of weight jokes about him, even to the point of a joke when they're trying to break into the dairy farm to steal milk, which is the... Which I'll get into in a little bit when I talk about the villain of why they're breaking into a dairy farm. But where Vic and Odie are able to get through a vent just fine, yet Garfield gets stuck. Because, of course, it's a fat joke. But Vic is, like, three times his size. So how the hell did he get that? Even the movie acknowledges the characters, uh, the character Gar Garfield acknowledges, how did you get through and yet I'm stuck? It's like, that's what they're trying to push towards, and yet he's looking like the most athletic cat in the world by the end of the film. That doesn't really gel. And then the second thing a Garfield movie shouldn't have, and this is the one that the live-action movies, the problems also had, is that I don't think these movies need a villain. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember, I've watched the, I watched the holidays, but the Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas specials every year. Because I love them to, I love them to death. They're some of my favorite holiday specials of all time. And you could kind of say the Halloween one has a villain, but it really doesn't. The Thanksgiving one and the Christmas ones, there's no villain. The The villain of the Thanksgiving one is John's incompetence, and the villain of the Christmas one is, well, nobody. There's no villain to that. It's just a bunch of nice family dynamics. That's really all you need for a Garfield movie. Maybe they realize that that wouldn't transfer well from a 30 minutes or however long that is, um runtime to an hour and 30 minute runtime, but I still feel like you could make a Garfield movie without a villain. Like, the first movie had the guy who kidnaps Odie, the second one has the guy who's trying to take over the palace. I still don't know, the plot of that second movie still makes no sense of how a cat was given the reins to a castle, and apparently this guy is too incompetent to get rid of the cat in order to take it for himself. It's... I remember it being, I remember liking that movie as a kid. I bet if I watched it now, I'd hate it. But either way, I don't think these movies need a villain. That being said, the villain can be kind of funny every once in a while. The main plot is them trying to steal milk from the dairy farm because that was what Vic and his gang did. And this uh, cow was part of that gang until she was caught. At the pa she was caught and taken to the pound and now she wants revenge why getting revenge on him would really be the right move because it wasn't his fault i don't really know but logic for this type of villain is not exactly going to be the highest priority the voice acting is really good chris pratt is a very good choice for garfield i thought i remember the live action was i remember the one good thing being Bill Murray's performance as Garfield. I know he, they made that joke in that second Zombieland movie where he, do you have any regrets? Garfield, perhaps. And yeah, the movie sucked, but Bill Murray was a perfect choice for Garfield. And Chris Pratt is a pretty good replacement. Uh, I think Nicholas Holt plays John, and he's not in the movie very much, but he has some pretty good vocal inflections that really match John from the original Anim from the original animated shorts and shows and everything. Something the live-action movie couldn't get right. And then Samuel L. Jackson plays Vic. Uh, his voice acting is fine. i just not entirely sure it was the right choice. I I'm not sure why. It's just something about it. Maybe it's just because his voice just so doesn't match with his son's that it was a little weird. I, I don't know. There's just something about it that I can't quite put my finger on of why I'm not sure if that was entirely the right choice, but he does fine, as well as the, the rest of the voice actors do their job perfectly fine. The comedy writing in this is pretty hit or miss, which 
is better than a lot of other kids' movies that come out nowadays, where most of the time it's like the most shitty, lowbrow humor that's aiming for the lowest common denominator with the jokes, you know, something like Trick and Little. But there are jokes that legitimately got a real laugh out of me, not just a half-hearted chuckle, ones that made me legitimately laugh. There were some where I'm like, okay, that was a decent attempt. There were plenty of jokes I rolled my eyes at. And, but then, then there's the heist plot, and I will give it credit, this movie is very different to what I assumed it was going to be. So it wasn't like a, I mean, the ending was kind of predictable, but the rest of the movie, it's like, okay, I don't know what you're doing here, but I'm curious to see what you're gonna do. Like, they're, again, they're breaking into this dairy farm, and then there's this security guard who is, like, and it's weird because, like, a cat calls, the the evil cat calls them, telling them there's gonna be a break-in, backstabbing Vic Garfield and Odie. And they do the same joke that Madagascar did when Alex tried calling the police after Marty disappeared, where she's talking through the phone. Where they got the phone, I don't really know, but it doesn't really matter. But she's talking through the phone, and on the other end, you're just hearing meow, 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 meow. It's, it's kind of funny. And, but then this, and that would have been a pretty funny joke, even though I've seen it done before, like I said, in Madagascar. But the problem is they ruin it with this security guard has, like, an app that can, uh, that can translate animal noises into what they're saying. That was kind of the point where the movie's like, okay, you're trying too hard here, this isn't, this part isn't funny, this character isn't very funny, and she gets into a fight with two cats and a dog. Yeah, but obviously Vic, Odie, and Garfield. There's also this subplot that's added about this bull and this other cow who were the, who are the faces of this dairy farm. One of them is used as like a show cow and the other one was put out to pasture and I don't mean killed, was literally put out to pasture, and he just kind of sits in the woods wa uh, watching the farm, and the, one of the, and his entire motivation is to get the other cow out of there, which they eventually do at the end of the movie. And I, again, it's original, especially for a franchise like this that could have just done the bottom of the, that could have just done the most base level stuff, and it probably would have been fine. They tried to go the extra mile by adding stuff like this, but I'm not sure if you really should have, because this, again, this stuff with the bull is like, I, the character's kind of funny, but again, the, that part of the story was just very uninteresting to me. Honestly, I thought the best parts of the movie were the interactions between Garfield, Odie, and John, and, every, and the ones with Vic as well. Honestly, I think had you just made this kind of, just kind of the father reuniting with the son and them trying to bond and everything, made that story instead of making this heist movie, this movie could have been fantastic. I think it's pretty good. I think if you haven't seen this, I think your kids will love it. Adults will probably find enough in this movie to like. Because, I, again, I'm an adult. I'm technically not the target audience for this. But, again, the target audience isn't an excuse for quality. And this movie knew that. It knew if it was going to pull this stupid heist movie plot, it needed to at least be a fun movie. Like, the climax is pretty fun, even if I, even if I said it kind of contradicts everything they've been telling us about Garfield up to this point. And again, I don't think a Garfield movie should ever be an action movie. But it was still pretty fun to watch, and it was pretty... And again, a lot of the jokes were legitimately funny. Not just kid movie funny, but were legit, like, something out of, like, the Disney Channel, where it's like, okay, that's a decent, it's an okay attempt, but it's still not funny. There were jokes that legitimately got a laugh out of me, and again, the voice acting's great, the animation looks stellar, it has a lot, it's a nice 3D convert of the original art style, similar to what the Peanuts movie did, which is also really good. I'd probably say the, I don't know, I'd probably say the Peanuts movie was a little bit better than this one, purely because the Peanuts movie had a little bit more to do to the source material. Like, this one has references to the source material, like there's a nice uh, reference to Binky the Clown, and then I said there's a cameo by Normal at the end. They have, they actually give a reason for Garfield to hate Mondays, unlike the original comic strips and the movie, like how the first scene of the original Garfield movie was just him waking up and saying, I hate Mondays. 
we don't know why. That's something that's always kind of bothered me about the comic strip, and it was partly because Big Bang Theory pointed this out in an episode. It's like, he doesn't go to school, he doesn't have a job, why does he hate Mondays? So it, it, it was always, it's, so that's kind of weird, but this movie gave him a reason to hate Mondays, where a bunch of bad shit that cats don't like usually happens on Mondays, like him getting a bath, him going to the vet, all that stuff. So, again, they're trying to go, they, I will give the filmmakers credit that they tried to go the extra mile with a lot of this stuff, but in some cases, I think they needed to dial back a bit and go back to basics instead of trying to make this big, over-the-top, like, Despicable Me-esque action movie. Like, there are some cases, like, especially when they're going on the train for the first time and Garfield flying all over the place before eventually crashing into the train, where it felt a lot more like Despicable Me than Garfield. But I still had fun with this movie. I definitely recommend giving it a shot, at least for a matinee. You could... There are far worse animated movies that have already come out this year, so I'm looking at you, Megamind 2. So I'm gonna give the Garfield movie a B. It's a perfectly good animated movie, but it's not a masterpiece. So that's all I got for Garfield, and I will see you all next time. Bye.